Before uh, introducing the webinar, I would like to first of all present our two speakers. And as you were saying earlier, with the number of institutions, uh, uh, with this webinar, uh, webinar, of course, uh, it was uh, uh, very much anticipated. So Christian and Jean-Luc both teach at Cégep La Nodière. Christian is a master's in philosophy. He played a key role in developing uh, the GBR chat uh, uh, platform. And uh, uh, Jean-Luc, before teaching, he was for 10 years pedagogical counselor, advisor for digital programs. And they, uh, we work together a lot, Jean-Luc and I. He's uh, co-founder of Lecter Levier, a specialized firm in the design of uh, learning and experiences for digital transformation. So Jean-Luc and Christelle will present their explorations and learnings with regards to pedagogical opportunities presented by AI. So great webinar, everybody. Thank you, Nicole. Uh, thank you uh, for uh, the invitation to be here today. Is my screen being shared? Yes. Great. Is that my screen, Kissa? Yes, uh, perfect. So we will begin. Welcome. Uh, hello, everybody. Thank you for being present today. So the theme of the webinar is using chat GPT in different pedagogical contexts. So first of all, Nicole said uh, so very quickly, but Christian and I are teachers at Cégep de la Nozière, Christian in philosophy, me in techniques of uh, multimedia integration. And since uh, last winter, since chat GPT came on the scene, we began with integrating uh, AI into our classes to see how we can help our students and uh, recognize uh, work being done with AI. Our intentions uh, pedagogically was to start with the practical side of things, with the concrete side of things for teachers and students. We didn't do any research. We didn't do any studies on that. We're just jumping into practice and the practice that is pedagogical and educational. We want to understand as teachers and as students what uh, uh, interpretation, what uh, artificial intelligence can help us with and what can do for us. And the objective is that we're not trying to see everything uh, today, but to just begin a process of thinking of the different issues and opportunities that uh, uh, AI brings into our practice. So the objectives uh, coherently with the idea of beginning from practice towards uh, uh, theory and uh, so the things we can do with GPT and the functionalities that allow us to have a certain uh, pedagogical approach. What we can do with Chat GPT with different pedagogical contexts. We divided it into two parts. First, how can I use Chat GPT to teach in my teaching tasks, and how can we help students to learn with Chat GPT? So it will be the great structure that will be the approach of the webinar. So we will begin with a short presentation for those who are not familiar with CAD GPT. Then we will get into the pedagogical context. We will begin with teaching and learning. We will structure teaching tasks that we can use uh, We can use CAD GPT for and learning as well. And at the end, because we're very much aware of uh, what are the limits, uh, what are the possible issues, it uh, won't necessarily all be covered in this webinar. We will uh, especially talk about functionalities of that GPT. So what is chat GPT? Very quickly, we're talking about generative AI. So the Office Québécois de la Française defines uh, intelligence, artificial, generational, generative AI as a tool. It's a very important word, a tool to produce content be, uh, thanks to algorithms. So in the definition, we see that there are limits and we're a bit afraid of what could be possible because it could lead to plagiarism, misinformation, or uh, uh, so uh, co-opting. So in the Office of Language, there are already some limits established there. And uh, more widely, we use conversational agents. What is important to understand is the artificial intelligence are algorithms and they uh, are there to generate content. Generation of content is not research. We don't 
find index elements or footnotes or sources of information behind the content. We, uh, they will, the from algorithms and uh, mathematical equations, be able to predict, uh, to have a predictive model after uh, which word should follow which. So it's really a linguistic model. It's not a Google-based kind of model, a research to search for things. No, after this word, statistically, that word appears. It's a language learning model, and it answers the questions uh, that we ask. So what that means is the conversational agent that we use can sometimes say uh, stupid things. So what is a conversational agent? And that is the difference between chat and GPT that uh, came on scene last winter. It's an integrated virtual assistant that allows us to dialogue with natural language. You don't need code to collaborate or dialogue work with chat GPT. You can ask questions in simple English language or French language or any language and get some answers. The uh, possible applications, there are different chat GPTs. There is one that we used, uh, that we concentrated on that one in the last months, but there are a whole bunch of other ones. There are lots of generative AI apps, and there's the new one, there's this one, and that one uh, coming out. And uh, we know that yesterday Microsoft announced that chat GPT will become Microsoft Copilot and that in Windows 11, you'll be able to activate with the Windows shortcut before, uh, instead of launching Cortana, that really doesn't work that well. But now with Windows, uh, we will be able to launch uh, Chat GPT uh, from the desktop, and it will be integrated into Office Suites, uh, Google and Microsoft Office Suites. It's already uh, announced it's coming maybe in one year chat gpt we won't even talk about it anymore because it will be integrated into uh, the different apps and the google and microsoft system so you can rec uh, you can have chat gpt uh, register for free on the website you can uh, register uh, in the beginning it's especially in english when you will connect so sign up and there are two versions one free version uh, depending on the availability of the server most of the users use the free version and the students, that's the version that they use. There's also the pay version that exists that is $20 a month. So about uh, $30 Canadian. What that allows us to do is to have access to chat GPT, even when the server, when there are too many people on it. It allows us to have response times that are very fast and have access to new functionalities. Uh, the uh, different plugins and extensions that allow us to add more functionalities. Uh, so we will show you a few examples of plugins, but uh, there's a lot of plugins. Every time uh, we uh, check, there are more and more and more plugins. So extensions also, uh, we are going to show you some that have an impact on learning and teaching, but others, uh, you can export them on your own. If you decide to pay $20 a month US, you can have access to them. So what chat gpt does it can generate content it can summarize information classify and categorize information extract data lists uh, of uh, data uh, and it can translate or convert content all of this that's not us who say it it's open ia which is the firm behind it but develops chat gpt and uh, 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 describes these tasks that the tool uh, can uh, accomplish. So the uh, basics, well, the chat GPT was especially sold as a conversational agent with which we can have discussions. The approach is a bit different. What we do is how we use chat GPT is to use the prompts. What's a prompt? It's an instruction. So we will use natural language, uh, of course, in French, to ask it to accomplish a task. So with Simple instructions, examples, for example, we can uh, say what uh, we want to discuss with ChatGPT. We're going to show you how to program it, how to set up instructions to realize certain pedagogical tasks. So this is uh, structured in a certain way. I'm going to show you how you create invites. The trans, uh, uh, translation of prompt is instructions. So uh, that's the heart of uh, how we write an invite, uh, a prompt. 
so we try to describe a problem. It's the context. Uh, I'm in a geography class. I'm trying to analyze the demographics of a country. The second step is the task. What do you want ChatGPT to do uh, within this context? And the third part is the formatting. How would you like it to answer you? Do you want it to ask you questions, to draw a table, give you a, a description, a summary? So we're uh, every prompt that we will present respect this fundamental structure. So today you will learn about lots of ideas, but then if you want to be autonomous in your own practice, you uh, will see we always do things the same way. And of course, there exists a lot of other parameters. Here you have a list of 21 parameters that you can add, uh, limitations, examples, who you address, uh, the questions to the audience, the types of language you're using, the type of quotes you want, uh, we're not going to go through the 21 parameters. There are lists on internet, but uh, these are the different ways you can uh, uh, prompt the system and add a lot of parameters. So let's get into the pedagogical con uh, context. So I'm going to show you how we've mapped uh, the context where we can uh, use chat uh, GPT. So here you have uh, teaching. So uh, teaching uh, plan. Uh, so you, you communication with students and the evaluation. So what can we do to evaluate the students? So here you can see the examples. We will, in the next part of the webinar, uh, uh, go through each of these sections and then we will get into learning. So how the uh, students can use uh, ChatGPT to grasp concepts and notions, study for an exam, or produce uh, evaluations or context or uh, a content that's a plan for our webinar. I hope uh, uh, it's interesting for you. So let's uh, get into it. So we, um, first in the planning and specification of everything we present is done with the free version of chat GPT. When we use extensions, then it becomes the pay version, but we can show you that there's only one time where we need the pay version. So um, we can ask, First of all, ChatGPT to give us the structure of a three hour class on any subject. For example, the cell structure for a bio class at the college level and to format it into a table and specifying that the columns, that the first one is the theme, the uh, length and the essential context. So the subject, the uh, length and the, so we can give a task, which is the, uh, give us a structure for a problem, which is the biology class that you could teach, and the format, which is a table. Uh, so um, ChatGPT will be able to propose uh, themes with uh, subjects, as a content with the uh, timing, and, con and it's not perfect, it's not done by a teacher, but it's a good uh, starting point to start to think about how we can organize our class instead of starting with an empty page. So you can also describe a concept. For example, explain the difference between B2C and B2B. So business to customer and business to business in e-commerce and, and asking it to add examples uh, of online shopping. So we are asking it in the pay version in this case, we are asking it in addition to give us a diagram or a schematic that will define these concepts. So in the free version, we couldn't ask for a diagram, it would give us a list or a paragraph uh, uh, of text. So here we have this model that presents the answer with examples already and showing the B2C Amazon as an example, whereas B2B we have Salesforce and that can, uh, present the information and organize it with different concepts in a graphic uh, way, in a graphical way, a visual way in the paid version. So uh, if you'll allow me, Jean-Luc, I'm just going to show you some plugins that you can explore. You see on the top there, uh, you can see that enable plugins, that's the pay version. And when you launch a prompt on ChatGPT, you can choose the pay version, GPT-4, then you can launch plugins. There are hundreds of them. 
Now, this one is one that allows us to create diagrams. You have one about questioning a PDF, doing research uh, from databases uh, uh, for healthcare databases, for example, search engines for healthcare databases. So you have here, um, starting from yesterday, you also have the possibility of using a search engine on the net to go and get information. So this is experimentation you you can do if you want to try different things, different functionalities, different formats, then you get the pay version and you have access to those plugins. Sorry, Jean-Luc, no problem. Uh, good point. Good, uh, uh, good uh, catch there. So uh, we can ask him to give us examples of pedagogical activities, uh, teaching activities. I don't know what to do with my, my students, for example. I don't know how to help them do time management. I could ask ChatGTP to give me ideas of pedagogical activities to say, next class, what can I do with them for time management? So here, um, it's uh, like a, an assistant that can say, well, we can do a case study on time management we can do a workshop we can do time use analysis and so with this we can uh, come up with ideas and then uh, as uh, professionals uh, uh, think about how we can help our students we can also communicate with our students so we can answer students and so for example we have uh, Teams, Zoom meeting, and the student says, is the next class important? Personally, I'm very tired of answering this type of question. The answer is always yes. I can ask ChatGPT to answer those questions in a professional way, in an educational way, in my place for uh, these repeated messages. So, and automatically, ChatGPT will formulate an answer. And of course, I will read it to make sure that the content is good, but it gives me a ready-made message that I can just make some adjustments to and answer uh, the user. You can also evaluate. So in evaluation, you can look at case studies, uh, uh, evaluation lists, for example, checklists, and you, for example, producing a case study, the tool can propose, can show a case study and uh, what's been learned from it on uh, consumer behavior. So we have an introduction here and an overview, a summary, uh, and uh, can help us with that. You can also ask it to create an evaluation table. So to create uh, an evaluation matrix, it uh, has to be tested, it's pretty long, but here in philosophy, for example, we can uh, uh, detail the main lines of a project in ChatGPT saying the, you have to write 900 words on uh, sophism, for example. I would create a, a, an uh, evaluation table with four levels, uh, satisfies expectations, uh, uh, surpass expectations, et cetera, and to specify the levels and to put this in a table, we can copy into our evaluation uh, tool table. So ChatGPT will be able to give us a first version of that. What this... Um, Will it be usable right away? Maybe not. Here we already have uh, a foundation that will allow us to think about and go quicker into our production of the evaluation tool. Jean-Luc, if I can carry on with what you said, uh, it's long having manifestations of an observation rule. And uh, this uh, table, can I use it for my classes? No, but as... Uh, so just to have a first version as a draft is very long. So I'm, we're not saying that ChatGPT is going to do it for you. No, ChatGPT will save you 20, 30% of the time on your task because it'll do the first draft for you. And then you have to take that and play around with it. That's the central argument of our webinar. ChatGPT will never replace you, but it will save you a lot of time. It will uh, uh, help you to not begin from zero and give you something to start with, with which you can modify and work on. So, and uh, creating a quiz with it also. We have, um, in, in mental media in, in integration, the first competence we try to uh, to develop is efficiency. So doing uh, tests for revision is really long and I don't have all time to spend uh, on that with my students. So I help uh, I, you ask a chat GPT to create a quiz for my classes. So here, 
I can ask chat GPT to create a test of 10 questions and uh, Quebec history, uh, put this test in Moodle XML uh, format in uh, French Canadian and to not number the questions. What it will do is it can code chat GPT. So it can give us files, for example, here XML, which is the Moodle format that I can reuse and import directly into my platform. It's made for Moodle, be able to do it in Teams, in any tool that uh, proposes questions or uh, autocorrect tools. Um, yes, the, it's the scary, the code there, but if we look at it very quickly, you can find the answers in the questions. So here, what is uh, the year of the foundation of the city of Quebec, uh, of Quebec City? First question, and they have it twice so that Moodle can see it. And then we have um, the choice of answers and the correct answer is 1608. So what's here interesting here is I have revision questions that I can use very quickly in uh, showing my students and doing a 10 question test in Moodle or in Teams or Microsoft Forms or Google Forms is pretty long here. I already have a model that I can reuse quickly uh, uh, at will. So, uh, of course, there are more complex questions sometimes that you uh, maybe you want to make them more complex, but uh, uh, Mr. Petit talks about closed questions, questions uh, with the, the choice of different answers. ChatGPT is pretty good at that, and it's a lot easier to do it that way, and we make sure that we use the right format. So that was for the uh, teaching part. Now let's uh, switch sides and look what we can do for our students. So first uh, thing is to take ownership of a concept of a notion to uh, master a notion in class. So first we can ask ChatGPT to become a tutor. I can talk about the help center that must generate exercise, et cetera. So we give them a role. We say, Act as a tutor. The context is in literature class or a college level literature class. What I would like you to do is to give me exercises to identify the uh, right uh, the, the right rules of style, the right figure of the same. So it uh, will give us a short uh, text and to identify the metaphors, the myths, or the personifications. Then you can. Uh, a student can do uh, number one, write out the metaphors, chat GPT can give them feedback. So I'm just gonna give you how we can go a bit further. Tutoring can be, I don't want you to give the right answers, but just give you some uh, uh, hints. Uh, I want you to uh, test my knowledge about certain things. So I, I, I teach simplism right now, sophism right now. We I act as tutor philosophy, propose, uh, uh, different well, oh, no, uh, identify I don't want you to give me the answer I want you to help me to uh, compose my answer so tutoring uh, can help a lot can generate examples like that and you can imagine uh, for uh, uh, tutoring helps you can maybe even for a student that uh, wants to have help with stylistic devices and have feedback and do other exercises so uh, the uh, tutor uh, is a great future. There's an article on Stefan by, by Stefan Bayardo on that. Also, Can Academy, how one of the biggest platforms for online learning. They have a group that millions of dollars invested. They want to publish tutors that will accompany uh, people in education. So everything around online learning, uh, synchronous education, remote education. They have tutors specialized in each subject, and they will be trained. And we will see how that will eventuate, but I think there's a future there. Second thing, you can also play um, and create uh, play situations. Uh, instead of having a tutor that will give me some feedback uh, specifically, we can do uh, uh, game-based learning. We can, for example, I'm gonna prepare uh, a, a mock interview. I want GTP to act as an employer to ask questions for a an interview for a position that I want to be hired for and ask uh, me some questions, then we can uh, ask uh, it to give me suggestions or uh, some uh, uh, advice to uh, improve 
uh, my answers. So since yesterday, we could do it orally because they've added vocal recognition to it. So there are plenty of situations like that, or you could ask chat GTP to become something or someone to uh, uh, create a situation, to create uh, a uh, simulation. So uh, I've asked it to be Nietzsche. Uh, we have to talk to uh, each other to have a discussion about God with Nietzsche. And so I explore, go ahead, explore, and then we will look at it together and we will see what we've learned. And then I will uh, give uh, a presentation that, that gives an overview of all what we've seen. So you look at different situations, role playing games, simulations, and can be very enriching. So there's a short example. It's not wonderful. It's about Nietzsche. But if you, you uh, it's the kind of thing you can do. You can also bring students to use chat GPT to study, which means they can use it to uh, create uh, crises and uh, to create notes. And we can help a student with that. For example, give my sympathy to the literature profs, but chat GPT is pretty good uh, for uh, literature. So, uh, Give me an overview, a short summary of Kanzid from Voltaire. It's, it's going to do that. And of course, uh, in the, you recognize uh, it as ChatGPT if you just copy and paste, but you could uh, take that and uh, modify it and use it uh, as a starting point. Uh, you can also create flashcards to study different schools of thought in psychology. And we can ask a chat GPT to give us uh, uh, some comparative knowledge or factual knowledge. So it will give us some different elements that we can copy and um, into other documents uh, uh, further to that. So uh, let's get into uh, production of content for evaluation. So that's what everybody's talking about. So we have a continuum here, as you can see. We have a progression on the learning. At the beginning, it's very consensual. We find it great for, student, for studying, for producing. Can we use it for exams to do evaluations? How? I'm not saying that the students must use it. We're just going to see the degrees of intensity that uh, it can be used to prepare uh, a final evaluation. So the first step would be ideation. I'm looking for ideas for subjects. Give me, um, help me with a brainstorm. So in evaluation, what we should understand with that GPT is there are usages that are menacing for evaluation and usages that are less uh, difficult. So I will uh, start uh, from the um, least dangerous to the most dangerous. We're talking about danger, but it's not mortal danger. So we have a graphic here, a representation that uh, uh, involves the degrees of involvement. Uh, very basic, I write a text. I can just use it to ask it to correct my mistakes and my grammar without changing the language. I can give it uh, uh, instructions, don't touch my sentences, just to correct the grammar and uh, the spelling mistakes. It's like using dot and that, uh, where you won't have to think about your uh, French, uh, they do it for you. Uh, usage a bit more, that is a bit more intense, medium intensity. I have problems with this or that paragraph. It's really not clear. I don't know how to reword things. It's a bit muddy. Can you give me suggestions to improve the clarity and coherence of my paragraphs? We could ask him to make it more persuasive, improve the style, uh, polish it, work on the format and content. And instead of writing in my place, it's like a coach or an assistant, it can make suggestions. So this is as if you meet a teacher and ask for help. So that uh, may be a bit more problematic, but it could be interesting. It's more like a tutor. What's uh, really scary is the production where we ask ChatGPT to do the whole thing. So I invite you to do the test. Take a sheet of, evalu of your evaluation. For example, you have a context, you have a task, you have a table for evaluation. Take that and copy it into ChatGPT and see what it can give you. And obviously, you will see the more you are pedagogically explicit, the teachers here that are very good to 
name uh, learning objectives to detail the different steps of a project, specify what they want in each paragraph. And with this level of rigor, uh, the more rigor you have, uh, the better ChatGPT can perform. So let's get into examples. So uh, it acts as an editor. So for me, when I write uh, things, I find it wonderful. We can ask him to be our editor. So we ask it to uh, edit for us. So it, it doesn't write for us, but it can paraphrase to, uh, I don't want it to be repetitive. I don't want him to add to my ideas. I just want him to paraphrase them to improve them. And uh, so I ask, the, for the text to be clear and the coherence of the text should be more clear. So I give it a target that it could be the quality of style. It could be the structure. And in this case, I'm asking for clarification and coherence. I'm asking him to use college levels of language and I ask him to change the length. So ask chat GPT to shorten it to 1000 words. So that's a zone of discomfort because now I have a bot that rewrites my uh, text and respecting my uh, content and not changing my language and, uh, uh, and working on the form. So when you have a student who doesn't write enough or writes too much for a, a project, it's very difficult to ask somebody to edit and to uh, uh, shorten the text. It's very uh, cognitively demanding work. We're asking to change the structure, to uh, take out certain things and to, we have an intro who can do that is it problematic is it, can it be used but uh, uh along certain criteria only i will leave that up to you i think the community must discuss that i don't know exactly how you want to do it but that functionality exists i would also add Christian, that we've done it on purpose to add uh, that avoid it to be considered uh, plagiarism because we have examples in our classes of students who were using chat GPT for other classes. And it was what they were asking chat GPT to do. They would take somebody's text, make sure that it doesn't, uh, it's not considered plagiarism and change the words. So I don't get caught and the students use it and they're not ashamed to say that they use it to do their work. So uh, here I didn't yeah. do a complete prompt. Uh, uh, write a text of 1,500 words on systemic racism. That's what I was saying. One of the things we can do, and we're still in testing phase, you know, Luke and I, of course, to verify all the problems, am I correcting robots? That's the question, because if I correct robots, bots, it doesn't make sense, and I'm not a computer teacher. I'm not there to correct your prompts. So those are the issues that we are dealing with. So just to say that, yes, it can do uh, final projects for you, but um, just take a step back here. And these are things we're testing. So it's uh, just at the testing phase. It may not turn out to be true. We're just testing it. So uh, what I want to try this session, and I don't know what uh, we will get, but I'm going to ask the students to generate uh, the first draft of ChatGPT and to become better than ChatGPT. So to give me a portfolio with one, uh, draft version and an improved version to see how you improve uh, the uh, draft version, the chat version, and to think about how you improve it and uh, writing strategies and uh, what the difference is between the first draft, the bot draft and the human uh, version. So that's what we're doing. We're experimenting different things. We're trying different things just like you. Last year, we talked about this, Kisa and I. We're gonna try the process. We're gonna evaluate the process. Uh -huh. Chat GPT is very good to do process. So, okay. In our production, in our language, how can we evaluate everything? And we are still in uh, experimentation. So what brings us to think about the universe of possibilities? So Christian and I, we like to talk about ChatGPT to see what we can do or what our students can teach us and what they can do. So there's also UNESCO that has thought uh, about this. This is what chat GPD can do. Can it uh, be used for superior education? So there are plenty of options here. And this uh, document uh, is uh, from April, 2023. So UNESCO has already started to think about this in presenting what we can do with chat GPT. There's the information there in the chat. You can go and see. 
uh, the different possibilities that we maybe haven't covered today. Um, this session, there's OpenAI. Those who develop, uh, the developers of, chat, uh, Open, uh, of ChatGPT, they have developed this section for teachers. Uh, so these are the creators of ChatGPT that give the teachers some examples and tools uh, of instructions or prompts that will allow us to use uh, ChatGPT in the classroom. So the Pandora's box is already open and we know that it's coming into Windows, it's coming into all the Office and uh, Google suites. And so we have to think about how we can integrate that into our classroom. So when you will begin with ChatGPT, you will see, wow, it's great. It can do all these things. Very quickly, you will see, whoa, wait a minute, there are limits. There are uh, some uh, pitfalls, there are some traps, and it can hallucinate, it might not do what I want, I have to work with it. And then you will say, man, it's not uh, what I want, it's not what I asked for, and it's not answering my questions, and it's going the wrong way. Then slowly, you'll be able to understand how to work with this tool, and to integrate it uh, for what it is, a tool that will help us to work with things. It's true for us. It's true for our students as well. The limits. So we have about 10 minutes left. I will uh, talk about the limits of chat GPT that you may know about. But uh, so unfortunately, we can't go into uh, a lot of depth on these things. We don't have time. But biases, first of all, chat GPT was trained on massive uh, online text and because humans wrote to this uh, it's all biased in one way or another and there's certain biases that are not apparent at first there's an example i found very funny somebody asked it to write a poem on donald trump and on joe biden look at the difference of length if i give no criteria on the number of verses etc this is a bias why ChatGPT writes less about uh, trump than biden but uh, there's biases behind the machine and there's an education that must happen with the students. It's not apparent in the beginning. We always think that it's neutral. First, be very aware that there are biases in chat GPT. And then uh, the question of hallucinations. So personally, I don't like the word hallucination. It, a hallucination is like a person is disconnected from reality and is uh, out there in the universe somewhere. That's not the position of chat GPT. Not the case. Chat GPT uh, makes mistakes with statistical inferences. So one of the things that's a problem right now, uh, uh, support this argument with uh, references and quotes that the APA format in French and uh, badges, uh, numer uh, digital badges motivate students ask, uh, find answers for that. It's not a research model, I said in the beginning. It will find answers, it will find lots of answers. Some will work, some references will be true and others will be completely invented because the tool is not made for that. That's one of the things we see. The students that ask for knowledge of a subject, they uh, can't tell the difference between uh, when it goes off the rails and will push it to hallucinate because chat GPT, that's one of those things where the students fall into the trap. It doesn't have enough knowledge to recognize that you're pushing it too far. If you push it too far, it starts to hallucinate and then you don't have the knowledge to see that you are going the wrong way, that you're being misled so that's what Jean-Luc was saying some of the things you will see chat gpt has some issues the assistant is as good as the person using it then of course if you're really really not good it'll do some of the work for you but uh, it reaches its limits very quickly so hallucinations uh, we've done a test at kids yeah with regards to asking it for factual information what is the fastest bird I ask the question three times with the same account, and we get to three different answers. So when we were saying earlier on, it's not uh, good at research, chat GPT predicts an answer, and it's programmed to answer something, even if it's false. So a student like Christian says that is not knowledgeable and cannot discern what is true and what is not, and doesn't have the skills to do so, and we see in the code, my colleagues that teach the code, uh, uh, teach coding, ChatGPT, yes, can do coding, but it's not 
good at coding will create a lot of noise. So what we see happening are tools that will correct these problems. For example, consensus. That is a tool uh, that uh, you can go see the app. What it allows us to do is to do research and to have with AI data results uh, of studies, scientific studies that will allow us to uh, identify certain elements. Before we had paper, or we were going through, then there was Google, then it's very possible that we have new tools that can come that can use this type of tool. So the next question we're asking is, can we detect a student that comes in with a work uh, with work done by ChatGPT? Can we accuse him of plagiarism or detect that it's AI generated? Currently, with OpenIA, according to them, they are behind the development of ChatGPT. They say, uh, not really. We are still uh, looking for solutions to that. And um, there are some that publish tools, including OpenIA. There are, uh, there's no way, none of them that allow us to find a reliable distinction that allows us to prove or show that it's done by a human or an AI. I've tested it with texts that I've written with ChatGPT that I wrote myself. I've tested uh, it uh, once a week so far to see what uh, exists right now. So far, I haven't found any tools that allow me to differentiate if a text is human or AI generated. But as Kisa was saying, I know very quickly when a student is using ChatGPT and hasn't thought about structuring his work or how doesn't have the knowledge or skills to back it up because there are mistakes, errors. I don't evaluate the work of ChatGPT. I evaluate the work of the student. If he wants to use ChatGPT, well, and it's not good, it won't be good. So uh, we also have to think about uh, confidentiality. I, uh, I was uh, sermoning a student who is giving his uh, agreement in using his uh, voice and uh, an AI to generate a kind of online avatar. All, uh, everything that is confidential information that would allow uh, somebody to identify you. For example, banking institutions are asking you now to authenticate uh, authenticate you by your voice. There are tools that are capable of reproducing your voice. So you have to be careful when you use these tools questions of confidentiality and privacy of information, all data relative to students. Be careful and don't give out a confidential information to the machine that you should not be giving out. If you can uh, let me uh, intervene, here's something I do for the students and social networks that they use a lot is assessment chat. Instead of using chat GPT, they go to Snapchat and they use the IA uh, Snapchat artificial intelligence to work in my classes. So there's ChatGPT, but there's all the uh, in, in, in AI. If you don't do a bit of work on that, there are no rules on capturing data with those uh, right now. And when I was seeing young people who are writing everything on artificial intelligence, I think it's a good idea to take a few minutes to explain confidentiality and private information to people. So issues, this is where uh, we're at now. We're thinking about these issues, Jean-Luc and I, we started uh, with the practicalities of it, what we can put in place, what we can do with it. And now we are thinking about these issues uh, that are possible. We are taking some positions. Right now, we're still exploring. First thing, there are limits to chat GPT that you have to understand. So we have to uh, deal with that biases, hallucinations, confidentiality issues we have to think about. You can't just let young people jump into the water without uh, any uh, safety. So the second thing is the questions we're asking and the community has some questions about this is integrity versus authenticity of evaluation. So the integrity of an evaluation is, am I measuring, does the evaluation measure the cognitive capacities and knowledge of a person? Authenticity is, uh, is my evaluation represents a real task. Does it evaluate a real task? A situation we're gonna see in the real world and we have to think about what kind of uh, compromise interplay happens there. Uh, impact on the posture of uh, uh, 
teachers and learning. We can uh, be uh, help uh, with tutoring. The posture of uh, the education will change. We have to add, I will have to mobilize, take time for other interventions in my class. So bring chat GPT. If you uh, just forget about evaluation and the issues, the other aspects, it also uh, affects what we're going to ask for students, how we learn, what are the resources available, and the teacher as well. What uh, can you uh, use ChatGPT for uh, also? And the next um, the next point is, go ahead, John. So it's much wider, but it brings forward questions on the impact on training, qualification, and education. So are the skills that we develop in our students, are they the right ones with regards to the needs of the research community or the job market? I already have students who have uh, graduated last year and gave webinars and training on usage of AI in the industry because they were flexible enough to uh, use these tools and learn them. So you'll have to train our students, our training programs. Uh, we are always questioning things. Our classes are broken. We don't know how to evaluate. We don't know what to evaluate, how we can do it. So we are really in a questioning phase on all of that. So we will have to have a strategy, a wider thinking on the overarching objectives of our classes and training. In the institutional level, there's a, all the whole impact on policies, on evaluation. Do we have to modify uh, uh, evaluation, integrate parts of it, uh, plagiarism, policy integrity, authenticity? Does it have an impact? Uh, and do we have to look at those elements? What will be considered plagiarism now? And uh, what are the constraints or um, the um, sanctions we will apply? to a student who will use uh, AI. Can we apply sanctions? So we have to ask questions on that, but there's also a lot of blind spots that we haven't had time to look at, to think about yet. So deep fake, it'll be very easy to, we're already capable of taking somebody's avatar and to create a deep fake with uh, pushing uh, the text and I can get scanned in 3D and, and uh, it looks like Jean-Luc. And uh, so all the environmental impacts as well, because Google searches pollute and, and I, I, intelligent, artificial intelligence pollutes even more. How are we gonna regulate all of that? Uh, right now, mainly it works underneath, um, it's, coal, it's all coal powered. So we have to ask questions about that intellectual property, who uh, is uh, the proprietor of the uh, uh, content generated. We're talking about generating content and we're talking about uh, screenwriters in Hollywood, for example, who are uh, striking against OpenIA and uh, AI and the program that I create with OpenAI. Does it belong to me? Can I share it? Who does it belong to? There are questions, ethical questions with regards to intellectual property as well, and all kinds of other considerations and things that we are starting to think about. Okay, well, if you want to go further with us on this, that's the next step. That's what we're working on. If you want to accompany us in focus groups and uh, uh, discussion groups around this, you can contact me and Jean-Luc. We will be happy to work uh, together with you on this. So we wanted to just present ChatGPT, give you a bit of a context, what we can do with ChatGPT in education and for learning. We tried to uh, just begin the discussion, talk about ethics, pedagogical issues, and, and the issues we are all thinking about. We have to explore that together. I hope that it's been useful and fruitful and educational for you and uh, that uh, it piqued your interest. Thank you, everybody. Gentlemen, it's very interesting and it's a bit scary as well, but it is... Uh, open some doors that's very interesting inspiring the number of questions also shows the interest uh, 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 in people in this webinar there's a lot of questions you've answered directly so i propose maybe going and looking at the questions that uh, you haven't answered yet so let's look at a first question now Kistia. Can I use ChatGPT to evaluations online? The Google, the students can do and in using internet and ChatGPT. 
I do it currently in my classes. I use Chat GPT to do evaluations, uh, 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 so formative evaluations. So I ask Chat GPT to do autocorrected tests of declarative knowledge to uh, structure content. Then an evaluation that's easy in multimedia integration. I can be a bit uh, more brash than Christian. I will evaluate a project, a, a product, a process. I uh, can get away with for a while, but a skill like uh, writing, uh, we really are questioning ourselves how we can uh, do things that ChatGPT cannot do. Thank you. Doris Leroy, who's asking the following question. If we encourage the students to use ChatGPT, is there a danger that they get used to it? Yes. It's we to be able to discuss with Madame Roy. It depends for what task uh, uh, you're thinking about. If I say to my students, you could use Chat GPT to uh, study for your exams, that's great. It's not uh, intellectual laziness, it's uh, taking initiative and using technology. But you have to look at the context and see what the usage is. It's difficult to pick a definitive position that it encourages laziness. Laziness. It depends. It depends what you use it for. It depends. Uh, uh, we have to talk further about that. Uh, there. Or is there research that shows that you can delegate tasks to ChatGPT to uh, reduce the workload in teaching certain notions? Maybe, but we haven't looked at that kind of research yet. It's very early still. So there's a whole bunch of research that will have to be done to see the impact on the teaching and learning, but we're not there yet. The first the research that's being done now is for people who are coding because it's one of the big uses of chat GPT. And the second one, there are studies that are, that are being done on people who work in finance and business cases. And it came out last week. I saw that on LinkedIn. So if we're looking right now, our professionals uh, that uh, what percentage uh, of efficiency they can capture with AI in the pedagogical space and the teaching, I haven't seen any yet. So it's more a comment. There's a teacher, a French teacher that uses it and uses autocorrect to improve language. And the students, thank you for your comments, Sandra. And that you use it this way and we can see the potential that ChatGPT can uh, give us. And as like my colleagues, I'm using it. There's Therese Ami who says, if we assign an evaluation on chat GPT, and the answers to be able to get the right answer, but uh, enter false answers, the interpreter, sorry, it's difficult to hear. We participate in training the tool. So chat GPT was trained on data. If we give it contact, we uh, uh, as soon as a student will uh, look at the evaluation content we put in. We always question, are we feeding the beast, giving it tools to answer our evaluations? Um, so it's like a necessary evil that we have to learn to work with. There's Shiraz uh, who's asking, what is bias? What do you mean by bias? When we talk about bias, it's a the general sense. Uh, so we don't want to say that chat GPD can be a, a proponent of discrimination on uh, uh, different criteria. We prefer to use the word bias because it's uh, the view that deforms reality. So we talk about cognitive bias, which is a tendency to deform uh, reality into uh, with certain questions and have a certain bias on the way we certain things like Biden versus Trump, but there's a deformation of reality and it's not neutral because chat GPT is one of the things that it cannot do is ethics. And my ethics classes, it's not uh, very dangerous, will not replace humans. Yes, you are right. It's a, a different usage of the term. Thank you for your question. There's also that a colleague who also teaches French and their comments on how do you evaluate uh, the usage of chat GPT. Thank you for
for your comment, Teresa. Just on that, we are at the same point and we are starting to think about the evaluation. How can we work on that? And we are looking at how we can transmit the results. Maybe with training or a company, we will be able to look at how we progress on that. There's, so do you have tested the module for compilation and tracy of a text? No, uh, because I've never used compilation for plagiarizing. I have other strategies of uh, uh, educating students about plagiarism instead of detection. Uh, I know that it's an important question. I'm just going to take 15 seconds. Um, it, detectors will uh, give you a percentage of I wrote this percent of the text. The It's infinite. You can regenerate, reformulate, and this text disappears forever. So you can not find the reference that you're copying from. So if you look, they are not adapted tools because somebody used plagiarism. It's up to me to demonstrate, to show, to prove it. So even if I have percentage right now, it's 70% AI, it's problematic for detection. Um, and we do some great work, but I haven't found any functional tools that help me to solve the problem. Thank you. What do you do when you see that uh, the student has used uh, chat GPT to write uh, something? And my, on my side, it's easy. I uh, am not happy when they don't use it. I won't give a sanction, but I will encourage the student to use it because in multimedia integration and in production of content and writing, it's not true that in 2023, you can uh, ignore uh, AI. So I encourage it because on um, the uh, uh, job market, they're going to need it to be productive. Monior and Kisya. Well, listen, uh, for me, I share uh, your thoughts, but right now I allow freedom of exploration of chat GPT in my classes because I don't want to be dogmatic. I want to see uh, how it's used and the pluses and minuses. And right now I'm letting them explore. Share every time you use ChatGPT. Tell me there's a share function. Put it in there, and I can see what you've done. So I can see what's behind what they're doing, and it's great. I don't know exactly what I'm going to do with it, but the idea right now is I have this possibility to explore and one day come to a firm conclusion on what I will evaluate and how. For now, I don't have a definitive answer. The last question. Anouk, is your institution or your department or your position for fraud in the uh, planning of classes? Our institution is recommended to add a mention saying that if we are wondering about the authenticity of the evaluation, we can question the student. And uh, in our program, we encourage, I think we have no choice because in multimedia integration, we have to use these tools to make our students more confident in other programs. I haven't heard about any uh, policy specifically about this last question. Najwa, do you have a strategy for evaluation of PFA and of memoirs with the existence of chat GTPT? Well, we are developing strategies, uh, evaluation strategies to see how, because it, that's the important thing now is how we can evaluate with JetGPT and how we can uh, frame, uh, have a framework for all of that. We are thinking about to think about maybe uh, a follow-up or accompaniment or training for that because we're getting more into a case by case. Uh, yes, because if you see the difference, because Jean-Luc, and uh, the skill uh, necessitates the uh, integration of AI is very different uh, than me in philosophy. It's very difficult right now to find uh, 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 things that apply to everybody. So now what we're doing, Jean-Luc and I, we're using our both different options, a technical option and a general option. And what we can do to move forward and one of the conclusions is we have to think about uh, didactics within each of the disciplines, right? 
now we don't have a lot of results that are transversal. Gentlemen, what a webinar. I think we're going to have to continue this uh, because there's a lot of ground to cover and a lot of interest and uh, to follow up on your activities and what you're doing for uh, features and uh, uh, chat GPT. I will invite everybody to fill out uh, the form uh, and ask people to evaluate uh, this webinar. And uh, we will uh, have to re-invite you and ask people to uh, uh, answer the survey. Uh, uh, so we can share uh, uh, the presentation. But if you have interest for something that uh, a part two of this, communicate with me and Christian, and we can uh, further explore this subject and see if we can answer your questions. Thank you to both of you. It was very much appreciated, very interesting, very uh, enriching. And you can see how people are thinking about all of this. And you were very clear on the potential limits of this uh, new technology. Thank you, Jean-Luc. Thank you, Christian. And we will see you soon. Thank you. Thank you, Nicole. Thank you, everybody. And uh, thank you uh, to our CEGEP who accompanies us uh, in deploying uh, these tools. Thank you.